This is part two of a short tutorial on how to create figures in Stickmotion using a pre-release beta version of Stickmotion 1.5. Most of the features shown in this video, however, will still be applicable to earlier versions of Stickmotion. Many of the screen controls will look a little different. This time around, I'm going to demonstrate how one of the Stickmotion knights was created. I'll start by dragging out some lines from the anchor point to create the knight's right arm. In this figure, the anchor point is going to be located at the knight's neck, so the first line will represent the knight's shoulder, followed by the knight's upper arm, and so forth. Notice how I've created an extra line at the knight's elbow. This will come in useful later on. Next, I'll add a line to represent the knight's body, followed by a few more lines to represent his left arm. Finally, I'll add one more line for his head. Now we can start replacing all of these lines with suitable images. With the last line selected, I'll press the button with the flower on it to select an image for the knight's head. Depending on how the lines were drawn, images may often appear upside down. Use the image rotation slider at the bottom of the screen to turn them around. Next, we'll select a line that represents the knight's right upper arm, and then choose an image for that. This process will then be repeated for the knight's left upper arm. To complete the knight's upper body, we'll then continue to select images for the knight's lower arms, followed by his torso. At this point, the knight doesn't look very good at all so we'll drag the handle attached to his helmet to make it a little bigger, and then use the Y offset slider at the bottom of the screen to shift it a little closer to his torso. Using two fingers, let's zoom in on the knight and move it across so that we can work on his left arm. The line that we added earlier for his left shoulder now makes it easy to drag his upper left arm into the correct position. Now we can use the Y offset slider once more to ensure that the left upper arm is located over the shoulder's handle. This is the point around which the upper left arm will ultimately rotate. We can then drag the handle at the other end of the upper arm to make it a little bigger. Now you can see that there's a large gap between the upper and lower arm, and that's why we added an extra line there. We can use the handle at the bottom of that line to drag the lower arm up into position. Let's now repeat that process to fix up the knight's right arm. That's now looking pretty good. Let's test out what we've done so far by pressing the thumbs up button at the bottom right hand corner of the screen. This reveals a couple of problems. Firstly, the extra lines that we added should not really be seen. Secondly, these lines have handles, and moving those handles whilst animating will produce undesirable results. So let's press the button again at the bottom right hand corner of the screen to exit test mode, and then zoom in a little using two fingers to address the problems. To stop the handle appearing, we'll select the line and make it static. We'll then reduce the width of the line to zero so that it can't be seen. This process will then be repeated for the knight's right arm. Followed by the two shoulders. Now when we test the knight, everything appears and moves as it should. Now, it's always been a little difficult creating figures like this in stick motion, as it's been necessary to add each part of the figure in the correct order, starting with the items that should appear at the back. I'm thus pleased to announce that in stick motion 1.5, this has now been addressed. In stick motion 1.5, you can select an item and then press the layer button at the bottom of the screen. This will show all items above your selected item as solid and all items below 
as transparent. You can then use the stepper and slider at the bottom of the screen to move your item forwards or backwards. But what if you want to create figures from your own images? Stick Motion 1.4 came with a new image cropping tool that allows you to cut out images for use in your figures. Start by pressing the scissors button at the top of the screen. I've already saved this figure, so I'll just select yes to leave the figure editor. When opening the image cropping tool, the image selection popover will appear automatically. You can crop any of the existing images that came with Stick Motion or press the button with the flower on it to bring in an image from your camera roll. Images brought in from your camera roll will appear under the Imported tab. In this case, I'm going to crop an image that I imported earlier. To crop the head from Barry Otter, we simply colour in the parts of the image that we wish to keep. We can use the brush size slider to adjust how much we are selecting at once. Use two fingers to zoom in on the image for precise editing. For more information about this tool, press the orange question mark at the top right hand corner of the screen. For now, we'll press the export button at the top of the screen to save the cropped image. Back in the figure editor, we can then select the knight's helmet and replace it with Barry Otter's head, and then flip it so that it's pointing the right way.